Hi, in this video, we're going to make an interactive live wallpaper using GameMaker that's going to work on both Opera GX and Windows. So you're going to need GameMaker, go ahead and download it from the link in the description. And once you've got it set up and opened, click on new, then select new live wallpaper, give it a name and hit let's go. So this is a template for a live wallpaper. So you're going to see it already has some assets. If you open the room, you're going to see a template screen for your live wallpaper. This shows you how it's going to look like at different resolutions. So the full thing is 4K, but it shows you that if you have a smaller resolution like 720p, it's only going to show that part in the middle. Of course, you can change this in the settings. So if you want the full thing to be shown even at 720p, you can do that. If you run it with the GX games target, you are going to see the default behavior like on my screen, which is 1440p. I only see this much and if I full screen, you can see that the whole 1440p area is visible. So this is the default behavior. If I make the window small, then you can see I see a smaller part of the wallpaper. So before we go and make a wallpaper, let's see how we can change this scaling behavior. If you go into the object that's there and open the create event, you're going to see three modes. There's no scale, scale and stretch and no scale is currently set. So if I go and change it to scale and then I run the game, you're going to see it shows the whole thing, which is supposed to be 4K, no matter how small my screen is. And if you change it to stretch, it's going to do the same thing, but it's not going to care about the aspect ratio. Meaning if someone's monitor has a different aspect ratio, your wallpaper will stretch over it. And so it will look out of proportion. So you likely want to go with the scale option if you want your wallpaper to scale to the display. For this example, I'm going to stick to the no scale scaling mode, which is where you get the zoom in if the resolution is smaller. Now let's see how you can import your own backgrounds and then put that into your wallpaper. I'm going to create a sprite asset. I'll call it SPR underscore wallpaper. And then I'll hit import to import an image file. So this image file is 4K, which means it fits perfectly with the wallpaper template. So to put it in, I'll just go into the room. I'll select the background layer and then I'll click here to replace this with the new image that I just loaded. So with a 4K image, it works perfectly. But if you only have a smaller image, like for example, I'm going to import this 1440p image. And if you go into the room, you're going to see it doesn't fill the entire room. So to fix that, you can just select your room and then go into the inspector and change its size. So I'll change it to 1440p, which fits perfectly with the image that I loaded. Now to make our wallpaper interactive, I'm going to add a basic particle effect that appears wherever the user's mouse cursor is. So for that, I'm going to make an object asset. I'll name this obj underscore wallpaper. And before doing anything else, I'll go and put it in the room. You're going to get this error if you put it in the wrong layer. So make sure that the instances layer is selected and then you drag it into the room. I'll go back into the main workspace and our new object is here. If you don't see it, just double click on it in the asset browser and it'll open up. Go ahead and add the step event that runs every frame of the game. And here let's call the effect create above function to make a simple particle effect. It will be a spark particle. It'll be created at the mouse's X and Y position. Its size will be one, which is medium and its color will be white. So if you run the game, you are going to see that effect at the mouse. Now mouse input is disabled by default for wallpapers. So if your wallpaper is going to use the mouse, you'll need to enable it beforehand. So go into your object and in the create event, call wallpaper set subscriptions and pass in an array. This array needs to contain this string saying desktop underscore mouse. So calling this will enable mouse input for your final wallpaper. And this function is also used to get some system information, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. Now we want to be able to control this effect through the settings menu that you get in Opera GX and on the Windows Live Wallpaper app. So let's go and add the create event. And here we're going to make three variables. The first one is particle enabled. Then we have particle count and particle color. So these are self-explanatory. They tell you what they're going to change about the particles. Then let's make sure that we actually use these variables for the particle. So let's go back into the step event. I'm going to change C white to the particle color variable. So that's used for the particles color. Then I'm going to add a repeat statement with the particle count. So say if the particle count is eight, 
this statement is going to repeat eight times to make eight of those particles. And then the whole thing should be under a conditional block that is controlled by the particle enables variable. So if it's not enabled, then the particles are just not going to be created. Then to tell Opera GX what settings we have, we need to make an array. That array is going to have sections where each section is a struct. A struct is just a collection of variables. And then the section has an array, which is a list of options within that section. So we are just going to have one section called general and it's going to have three options. The ones that we just set up and each option has a type. So the first one will be a boolean, which is true or false. The second one will be a range. So that's a number between a minimum and a maximum value and a color for the particle. There are more types of options that you can create. So if you press F1 to open the manual and read the page for wallpaper set config, you can read all about the data that you can pass for your configuration. For that, let's make a local variable called config and let's store the array inside that. The array has a struct and this is a section. So let's mention that as the type. Its name will be general. So this is the internal name that we use to access it. And then its label will be general with a capital G because this is just the text that the user sees in their configuration UI. And then children is an array containing the options that this section has. And each option in this array is a struct. So we are going to have three options within this section. The first one, as I mentioned, will be a boolean. Its internal name will be particle underscore enabled. And its label will be enable particles because that's what the user sees. And its default value will be true. Then the second option will be a range. Internally, it will be called particle underscore count. Its label will be number of particles. The value will just be taken from the variable that we already have. And then let's set the minimum to 1 and the maximum value to 50. The final one will be a color. Its internal name will be particle underscore color. Its label will be particle color. And then the value will be taken from the particle color variable. Then finally to send all of these settings to Opera GX, we're going to call wallpaper set config. And we're going to pass in our array as an argument. So this will tell Opera GX what settings our wallpaper has and then the user can change any of those and our wallpaper can receive those changed settings to modify whatever the wallpaper is doing. So for that, let's go ahead and add a new event. This will be under other. It's called wallpaper config. And in this event, you're going to receive your modified wallpaper configuration inside the wallpaper underscore config variable. So I'm going to use this event to change the particle enables variable that I have. So for that, I'll get it from wallpaper config dot general dot particle enabled because these are the names that I used while setting up the configuration. So keep that in mind. It's the name that you need here, not the label. So then for the other variables, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to read them from the wallpaper config struct using the names that I set and I'm going to apply them to the variables that I have. So to test this, let's run the game using the GX games target. When it opens up, just scroll down and select the toggle configurator button and the configuration UI is going to open up. Here you can see your options with their labels and values. So if I disable enable particles, the particles disappear. I can then enable them again and I can change the number of particles that appear and I can also change its color. Then you can click on reset parameters to reset all of these settings to their default values. So with our basic live wallpaper set up and working, let me show you how you can share it with your friends and the wide internet. With the GX games target still selected, click on create executable, select upload as live wallpaper mode, and then sign in with your Opera account if it asks you. If you get an error about invalid data and you see in the output that it's about your title having invalid characters, just go to game options, select GX games, then select the mod menu and change the name here so it doesn't contain any invalid characters. Once you hit apply, you can upload again. You're going to see the edit mod on Opera button. So click that and it's going to open the GX create site where you can set up all the information about your mod and then release it. So you can give it an icon. You can go into media and upload a cover art, which is required. Then go into metadata and set up an age rating and enter a long description. And then if you're making it for the jam, you need to select this tag and then just hit save.
Then to release it, go on to the publishing tab and then next to your version here, click on promote to public, confirm it and then enable the public checkbox. Once you've done that, you can click on the open public mod button and this will take you to the public page for your mods where you can install it in your browser and you can share this link with your friends. So just hit install, it will add it to your browser and if you open a new tab, you'll see it there. Now to test and use your wallpaper on Windows, it's pretty simple. You need to download the live wallpaper companion app. To get the app, you need to open Opera GX, go to the settings and search for live wallpaper. Then go into its menu and here you can download the app. It's gonna appear in your system tray next to where you have your date and time. And you can get your wallpapers to show here. So if you go into Game Maker and you run your game once with the Windows target, it should show up in the live wallpaper companion app that's in your system tray. So if I click on it once, mine shows up here. And when I click on that, the wallpaper appears on my desktop. Now to change its settings, you can go into the companion app again, go into active wallpaper and select configure parameters. This will open a friendly menu where you can change the same options and then see the effects in your live wallpaper. It's also pretty simple for other people to use your live wallpapers on Windows. So if they install the companion app and then they install your wallpaper through the GX store, in addition to it showing in Opera GX itself, it's also gonna show up in the companion app. So for Windows, they don't need to do a separate installation. They just need to install it in Opera GX and they'll have it on their desktop as well. Now there's this new function called wallpaper set subscriptions, which we used in the beginning of this video to enable mouse input. It's mainly used to subscribe to system metrics so you can continuously receive information on the CPU, GPU, RAM, and all these other things that it provides. You can go into the manual and read the page on how to use it. But basically, you need to call the function with the metrics you want to subscribe to in an array. Then in the wallpaper subscription data event, you will get a struct containing arrays of devices for each category, like an array for CPU devices, an array for GPU devices, and so on. There is an example at the bottom of the manual page and a tutorial demonstrating all that you can do with the system, which is linked in the description. I hope you have fun making your live wallpapers and I'll see you in the next video.